river. We're gonna have to be very careful about depth. Hey, first lock on the dube. Maya's still trying to figure it out while I'm holding to this. Okay, so the lock is doing something a bit funny. Any ideas? I'm Maya and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat and we started going north from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers and 200 locks. Join us as we navigate river currents, discover incredible places, cruise through canals, wait out a global pandemic in the heart of France, and record the whole voyage with a new episode every Friday. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. The adventure continues! Today we head further up the canal and we're actually going to be entering into a river soon. So the Rhine Rhone Canal sort of dips in and out of the Dube River and at parts where the river is unnavigable then there's canal and then you go back into river. If you remember from the last episode, the Dube River is notorious for shallow sections, and last time we transited this river, we hit the bottom a few times. Of course, we wanted to avoid doing that again, so we'd have to be on the lookout today. By the way, I have to say that if you haven't watched our previous video in this series about the town of Dole, you should really do that because it was a spectacular place. But now we are leaving and uh, heading into more adventures. Our goal today was simply to get as far as we could. The weather was lovely, and as long as we didn't end up grounding in the river sections, it seemed like ahead of us would be a gorgeous day of cruising. All right, so now time to open the eclus, open the lock. And it always takes a few tries. If you want to know a bit more about these, I think in the last episode, we get given this by the lock master and taught how to use it. But yeah, it's not. You have to be really close to the lock before it picks up the signal. But eventually the remote did start preparing the lock, and we waited under this incredible green canopy. Little did we know that this wouldn't be the only time that the locks showed their attitude that day. As a sailor, one thing I often miss is the feeling of standing beneath the shade of a tree and breathing in the scent of a forest. But to experience that while still on a boat is just otherworldly. The sweet smelling shade, the gentle motion of the boat beneath my feet. It sure is a lot slower when you've got to film it, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> I think this has to be one of my most favorite sections of the canal. So beautiful with the trees arching over the boat and just what a beautiful light inside, all dappled sunlight through the trees.
So we kept going, the scenery kept changing, but it was always lovely, big puffy white clouds floated overhead. Life was good. So just in front of us here is an old lock. As we drew nearer, we realized it wasn't an old lock, so much as one that wasn't being used since the river wasn't currently flooding. We are entering the Dube River! Alright, so here comes the part that I was talking about. Now that we're in the river, we're going to have to be very careful about depth and watching all navigation signs, watching our depth sounder, really being careful. Here is a weir. So you gotta be careful about these to not go over them, that's for sure. You gotta watch out for the signs pointing you to the direction of safety. So on the topic of the depth in this river, apparently when this river was sort of made suitable for navigation, it was made so that barges could be towed along with horses. Which, or with ox side, which was kind of more the traditional way of doing it before engines. And so normally the deep channel that's possible to navigate is close to the towpath, um, which right now is proving to be the case. We've actually got more depth under the keel than we had in the canals, which is excellent. Okay, first lock on the dube. So here is the little channel with the lock. And then here, the Dube River continues. And there's a big arrow there pointing you to take the lock, because if we headed upstream, there would probably be a weir in our way and we wouldn't be able to get up there. Aladino's trying to get this thing to pick up the lock. It's so annoying. I thought we were so close that I can turn around, uh, do a 360 as it opens, but no, it didn't even get my message. <laughs> ranging. Ranging, it's always ranging. <laughs> And I'm raging. <laughs> I'm a raging when it's raging. Well, at least the little electronic lock keeper isn't entirely without personality. Here we are. Maya's still trying to figure it out while I'm holding to this. Which I really don't understand. We couldn't be closer. I climbed off the boat and fortunately the remote worked when I was literally standing inside the lock. You made it! We just hoped we wouldn't encounter this problem again since there's not always easy places to disembark. The only thing to do was to continue along and see. Past here we continue again in the canal. So like I said we weave in and out of the river do sometimes canal, sometimes river. Cherry tree! Attack! another weir over there and uh, looks like the towpath is on this side so I'll try to kind of stay close to this shore. I think that the rain we've been having the past few days has definitely helped to stock up the river a little bit which is great news. There's actually a bit of current against us so we're actually going about a knot slower than we would be and there are every now and then little eddies which I can feel grab the bow but not too bad and I think that is worth it for not having to smack our peel on the bottom. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Waiting for the igloos to open. Story of our lives on the canals. That's it. 
It's not a bad life though. No, for expecting rain today, I'm actually very pleased. Yeah, the forecast said it would rain. Yeah. There well, are some clouds, maybe there will be a squall here or there, but... The whole week should be squally, so I expect it to change tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see. If we find a cozy spot, we stay, and otherwise we get moving with the rain. Okay, so the lock is doing something a bit funny, so I'm walking over to check it out, but have a look at the light. Well, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a red light on, and then there's the flashing orange light. Now, normally when the lock is getting ready, the red light and the green light come on and the flashing orange light, and then once we're allowed to go in, then the red light turns off. But here there's only the red light and no green light which should mean it's not getting ready, even though our little electronic thing says that it is. So, I need to go see what the situation is. And just as I thought, so the water level is high in the Eclus, and it's not preparing for our passage. So we're gonna have to try and figure out what's going wrong. Any ideas? No. Very strange, maybe we have to try and phone VNF. So we phoned VNF, the organization in charge of all these locks, and they promised to send someone right away. In the meantime, we lounged by the dock and I played a tune. All right, well, we're waiting for the lock, so there's time for a little tune, and I feel like playing some kind of bluesy number. Uh, since we're sitting on a river watching the time pass by, I figure something blues-ish is in order. This one is called Phil's Funky Grandma, and it's by... Um, a teacher of mine, an old teacher of mine in Canada named Jaron Freeman Fox. <laughs> was as good as their word, and someone came to fix the lock right away. She said it was due to all the weeds which had accumulated in the lock somehow messing with the sensors, but whatever the reason, it was fixed and we could continue. entering an interesting section where we'll be traveling in a canal with a wall next to it and just next to the wall is the river. So it's like a canal next to the river and next to the highway. re-entered the River Doob. We've been in and out of it all day. So far we've been very pleasantly surprised with water levels. Now there's a little bit of a irony in all of this because if you remember after lockdown when we left Chalon-sur-Sound which is the place we were stuck for three months due to COVID-19, 
When we left there, we wanted to take some small canals north through Belgium. And those canals were all closed due to lack of water because it hadn't rained in like a month. Water levels were really low. So now it has been raining on us during our voyage and water levels are a bit higher. Um, so we maybe even could have taken the other route. But anyway, we're here now. It's a beautiful, beautiful journey. It's kind of nice to see these places that we've already seen before, see them at a different moment in time. And yeah, very happy about water depth. So tonight, I think we're going to try and find somewhere a little bit wild to stay, as wild as you get in France, by a lock somewhere, uh, hopefully not too close to a town. We want to make some curry and uh, maybe I'll play some music or something, I don't know. But that's the plan for this evening. Okay, so we just arrived at another lock. It's displaying two red lights and our little electronic device from VNF says repairing is happening. Um, we don't know totally what that means, so we're gonna give them a call and just see if we can get some more answers. Anyway, if it's not fixed in time, then I guess we just spend the night at this dock, which would be fine as well. But VNF still came through and fixed the lock, and once more we were on our way. Now it was time to search for our night's accommodations. We were back in the river, wide and flat, and even if we couldn't find a dock, we could always throw down the anchor. Eventually, though, we did find a dock, and it was sort of in the wild as we had hoped for, although there was still a castle nearby, because this is, after all, France. And what is a forest without a castle to overlook it? But we tied up in solitude, surrounded by lily pads and the sound of gentle water. It had been a funny day. We had started out being nervous about the depth in the Doube River, but in fact, the river sections were deeper than the canals. And we hadn't been at all concerned about the locks malfunctioning, but it turns out that was the main obstacle of the day. Maybe there's a lesson there about expectations, but I was too tired to draw it out. The air felt heavy with rain, but we were home for the night, so we didn't mind. The sun set, and magic carpet bobbed quietly at the dock, and that was all. Thank you so much to all of you for watching. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click the little notification bell, and even leave a comment if you're inspired. We read all the comments. An extra big thank you to our patrons for making these weekly episodes possible. If you'd like to become a patron and help support what we're doing with these videos, uh, you can do so for as little as $2 a month, and you get lots of behind-the-scenes bonuses like weekly journal entries and private messages and photos and stuff like that. An extra big thank you to these folks who really go above and beyond to make sure that these episodes keep continuing, and we'll see you all next week.